Hello everyone. Welcome back to Foolish Engineer. Selecting an AFE isn't that easy. The ideal AFE depends on our battery chemistry, how many cells we are monitoring, the current demands, and the environment. Designing a BMS with an AFE means balancing accuracy, noise, power consumption, and thermal management to keep our system safe and efficient. Let's say detail how that works. Let's imagine we are working on a project, say designing a battery management system product with enclosure and all. Sounds simple, right? Until we have component delays, board fitting issues, thermal problems, or safety compliance. That's where RTM develops saves the day. In this, we can capture all the requirements in one environment so everyone sees them. Then, its BOM portal helps to check the selected component availability, pricing, and life cycle status. For traditional schematic and PCB design, RTM Designer is already there. But the RTM Develop helps with MCAD ECAD code design for mechanical engineers to check the PCB fitting. When the design is done, we get a platform where team members review and give feedback on contexts like safety and pin maps, etc. After review is done, RTM Develop generates release packages with up to date BOM and design documents, and it preserves version history so we know who approved what and when. Finally, RTM Develop saves all of the data like version history to evolve the product during production. Our life gets easier with RTM Develop. It is faster, safer, and smarter. If you want to develop a full electronics product, you can check the link in the description to know more about it. Batteries come in different flavors. NMC, LDO, or LFP chemistry for different applications. These differences impact what AFE we choose for the job. Let's see that. First off, cell voltages. A typical lithium ion cell might go from 3 volts when empty to 4.2 volts when fully charged. A lithium ion phosphate cell, which is common in many bikes, has slightly lower range, which is around 2.5 volts when empty and 3.6 volts when full. Most BMS IC chips are designed with a certain per cell voltage range in mind. And luckily, many cater to both chemistries. For instance, TI's BMS IC series fully supports both lithium ion and lithium ion phosphate cells to 15 in series. The difference in chemistry might not require a fundamentally different AFE, but it could affect configuration. For example, the over voltage threshold we program will be different, which is 4.2 volts versus 3.6 volts per cell. Some ICs let us adjust those thresholds in software or via external components easily. The voltage of LFP cell doesn't change drastically with state of charge. That means we need to rely more on Coulomb counting to get the SOC. But we still need an accurate AFE to catch the cutoff limits and imbalance. Some AFEs come up with inbuilt Coulomb counting also. More advanced designs synchronize voltage and current measurements to calculate power and internal resistance precisely. Without such precision, the SOC and SOH estimation will not be that perfect. An AFE that's great for 5 cells power tool pack might not work for 16 cell light EV pack. So the chip manufacturers typically offer different AFE models for different cell counts like one chip for 3 to 6 cells, another for up to 12 to 15 cells. Using the Rockman either wastes capability or it won't handle the voltages. Also, high cell count packs like EVs often require multiple AFE chips, which can handle 12 to 16 cells. But for low voltage packs under 60 volts, we can usually do it with single IC and no complex isolation which simplifies the things. 
a power tool might draw 100 ampere burst of a 5 cell pack. That means if he needs to measure large currents, possibly via a robust shunt resistor and a high current capable design, just like what we saw in our last video. Or for an EV bike with around 20 to 30 ampere typical currents, a different approach might be fine. The speed of measurement can also matter. A high performance EV might need millisecond scale voltage readings to detect rapid changes, whereas a slow discharge battery can be monitored at a slower pace. AFEs have specifications like conversion time and sampling rate. To capture these fast changes without problem, some AFEs use sample and hold architecture and even separate high set external indices rather than relying on an MCU's internal one. If we are designing an automotive BMS, we need chips that meet strict reliability and temperature specs. For a consumer e-bike, the environment is gentler. Also, EMI EMC considerations differ. An EV BMS IC must coexist with a lot of electrical noise. So, those often have filtering or differential measurement to reject noise. So, when selecting a BMS IC, we must look at how many cells in series, what's the max voltage, what chemistry can it support, how many temperature sense inputs are needed, how are we measuring current, all those factors ensure one size doesn't fit all. Designing a circuit using AFE for a BMS isn't a walk in the park. There are some challenges that engineers like us wrestle with. Batteries live in electrically noisy environments. Things like motors, inverters, chargers, all creating electromagnetic noise. The AFE has to pick up millivolt level signals without getting fooled by noise. So, AFEs must deliver precise, consistent data with these noisy and often hot environments. Some low voltage BMS designs rely only on the AFE, no separate MCU. In that, the AFE alone monitors and controls the battery and automatically disconnects if fault is detected. But many high-end designs include an MCU and use CRC-coded digital communication to filter out any corrupt data. We demand a lot from these AFEs. Example, measure cell voltage within 2 mV accuracy or better. Hitting that means high quality components, precise voltage reference, low offset amplifiers and careful calibration. The change in temperatures can change the readings. So often AFE needs calibration or temperature compensation. The AFE doesn't leave alone. It usually needs external components. For example, resistors for voltage sensing, a precise thermistor for temperature, and the current shunt for current sensing. Choosing the right components is crucial. The AFE is always on duty, even when the device is off. Many BMS ICs keep monitoring cell voltages to catch an overcharge. That means the AFE needs to sip power, not chug it. In a battery powered system, every milliamp matters. A challenge is designing the AFE to be low power while still being responsive and accurate. Low voltage BMS often sits idle for longer periods. For example, an EV bike in storage. So AFE with ultra low standby current and sleep modes are the best to have. Some AFEs drop to microampere level consumption where the system is in sleep mode. AFEs and their balancing circuits dissipate heat when balancing cells. In a tightly packed battery, if the AFE tries to bleed 50 mA from a cell through a resistor, that could be 100 mV or more per cell. Not huge, but if we balance many cells at once, it adds up. We need to ensure the AFE and its resistors don't overheat the battery or themselves. 
designing one AFI that can serve multiple different battery configurations or chemistry means it has to be flexible. Maybe today we want it for a 4-cell NCA pack and tomorrow for a 6-cell LFP pack. That means more flexibility, more settings, which can add complexity in design and testing. At the end, designing an AFA is about balancing these trade-offs. High accuracy versus low noise, low cost, low power, etc. It's like juggling pipe balls at once. And there you have it, the analog front end of a BMS demystified. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.